Welcome everyone to um, class. This is the second, I believe, of September and uh, running right through this year. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at your Google calendar. I'm sorry, your class calendar and seeing if there's anything that's due today. And we are not going to have anything due until we get to a document. You won't turn in models in this class. You will turn in the document made from the models. All right. So we're going to learn to model and we're going to learn to model in a way that is very clean and um, in in past in the past for me i'm going to teach you by the mistakes that i've made if i had leftover remnant things in my model that really didn't change my model like sketches that weren't used things that weren't used you want to get rid of all that and just have only the things necessary in the model and make it very very clear and concise so what we're going to do today is we're going to start by looking at our student guide so remember that we talked about the terminology chapter and we're going to skip dimensioning and tolerancing until we get to dimensioning and tolerancing. That way we don't forget that. We're going to go right into this and I'm going to open this and I'm going to go to the other screen and we're going to look at this. And this has a lot of the user interface stuff in it. Some things have changed in 2022. So we might want to, we need to update this uh, student guide and you might, we'll look at this directly online to see what things have changed. All right, and there is a way to show what's changed in 2022 and you don't know that, but um, probably you see this is a 2020 version. So we may want to turn, turn on updates from 2021 and 2022 since this is a 2020 PDF. So you guys can open this and go along with me. And I'm going to move right over to, I'm going to stop presenting this. Sorry, stop presenting it. And I'm going to present my entire screen on the right hand side. Okay, I wish I, this caption didn't take over this whole screen, but it kind of does. So if you need, um, if you need to see something and the captioning is taking over your whole screen, and you need me to zoom in on something, I can turn captioning off and then turn it back on. So please let me know when you can't see something. And when I look back at the videos, they look like they're kind of fuzzy. So we're going to try and get through this as best we can. So if you look at unit three, if I go down here, I'm going to kind of zoom out a little bit. I don't know. There we go. So we have this page by page. There is a whole page on this whole section is on part modeling. And this is called parametric because Thing, files reference each other. And we're going to talk about how files reference each other. So if you put a part in a drawing, if you open the drawing, it actually needs the part to put it in, put the views in. So that's why we put the parts and the drawings and all the documents together in folders so that it knows exactly where to go and get those things it's referencing. All right, when I change a part, it changes it in the assembly, it changes it in every drawing. And so they're actually just linked. So parametric is linking things together. This area right here, I'm gonna hit escape right now. This area right in here shows you the different file types, although it doesn't talk about, well, there's a project file right there. It doesn't talk about the IPN file. And so we will be talking about that. And we did talk about that earlier. We have created a project, but if you need to know how to do that again, you can go right here and it shows you how to do that. When we create a part, you can click on this icon right here, or you can say file new or control N 
or you can hit on that little white. Um, well, I'll just show you. This little white thing right here is new, just like AutoCAD. Or you can say File New. Or you can click on this button for a new part, assembly, drawing, or presentation. The only way that we can create a project is to go into the projects area right here at the top and create it. Now we can switch between our projects and you see that I have several. I have a daily work project for 2402, Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, Thursday. So notice that Monday, Wednesday class has already created this part. So down in this area, you're going to see that things are pinned here and it's usually pinned when not just when you create it. And this was the way it was in the past, but it seems like I have not opened that file back up from closing it. So you can open files here, but if you don't see a file here and drawings will never show the drawing to see, you have to look at the name of that to click on it. It won't show a picture of the, the actual object. Uh, but you can click on that and then it'll open that file from that project. So that's in the Monday, Wednesday class. I'm going to double click on Tuesday, Thursday. We have not created any uh, parts yet. So you can see that these are active. They're showing by the active project. If I showed all documents, I would not know what's in that project. So it's best to leave that active project. Let all these things be shown. Um, sort by most recently opened will show first and date modified all dates. So you can sort these things. You can change this up. But if you change this up and things don't show up, don't worry. Go say file open. They're still there. Just because it's not showing in the pinned area, in other words, doesn't mean that it's not there. Now I can right click on something that's pinned and take it off being pinned if I want to. But this is pretty nice to have. Going back to our presentation. And maybe I need to zoom in a bit. When you create a part, um, we're going to look at the tabs and panels and the sketch area. And when we get into our drawings, we're going to start constraining sketches. And I'm going to show you about that. So this is in the sketch ribbon. You see this is sketch right here. This whole area on the left hand side is called your model browser. You can browse in there and see where what sketches are controlled by, you know, are used by what extrusions or or whatever features. And there are some more things inside here, like the origin, like the view representations, like the model representations. And we're going to see that. But this is your ribbon and your ribbon for the sketch mode only. And so we have the ribbon, we have the file and the application. So you, you select on that. It looks like file now and you can go into that. So if I look at that right here, it says file, not inventor. And these are all the things that we can do without anything open. All right. Now, the other thing is the get started tab. When you go to the get started tab, this right here is your home screen. So if you hit home and get started, it will come to this screen if you want to. We also have our tools where our application options are. And there are some other things that we can put in here that are kind of like upper level things. But once we have a part open or we create a part or create a file, we get a lot more options. All right. So coming back over here, uh, we have the title bar and that's going to show you the name of the part. And every time you start a part, it's going to be called part one, part two, part three, part four, until you save it. When you save it, that's going to change to the file name. And over here in your model browser, you can see your part being solid. And that part one will also change to your file name or your part name. And so we'll name our files our part name. Now we have the draw area the and we'll have a modify area, constrain area. We're going to have some different areas. And this is kind of truncated, so we'll be looking at this. 
But notice that there's a big finish sketch button over here. When you're in your sketch mode, you have to get out of your sketch sometimes to get to 3D model. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. But we're going to go on down through this. And if you want to see this, you can go through this chapter three. We have the sketch tab that is not truncated. It has um, start a 2D sketch. So if you're just in, um, when you're in Inventor and you want to start a 2D sketch, you can click on this and select on a plane or a flat face. We cannot sketch on a curved face. Now we can draw lines, arcs, and we're going to look at these different kinds. Um, we can project geometry, which we're going to talk about is tracing that onto our sketch. We can modify things. We can pattern things such as rectangular patterns, circular patterns, or mirroring is also patterning. Dimension tool is the dimension tool. We don't have dimension diameter, dimension radius, dimension these things. If I want to change the way something is dimensioned, such as an aligned dimension instead of XY, I'm just going to right click before I set it down and it gives me those options. So I'm going to show you that. So if I if I'm clicking on an arc and I want to dimension it as a diameter or vice versa, when I click on it, it gives me one. It's going to show it all a line all the way across. That would be a diameter. If I right click, I can say that I want that to be a radius and it will go from the center out. So you can see that your right click button is going to come into play a lot when you're in here. Now we're going to talk about this is your whole constraints tab. That's that cheat sheet that I gave you that talks about all these constraints and the terms. And we're going to look at those and we're going to look at these things right here, which deal with constraints and dimensions. We can insert an image into a sketch. We cannot insert an image into a part. It has to be inserted into a sketch and then it can be in a part. So, we want to have, you know, like, let's say that I take a picture of something and I want to bring it in and I want to trace over it. Or I want to overlay that picture and lay it onto my object. I would want to bring that image in like that. We can bring an Excel set of points in to be used for a curve or a shape. And it will bring it in through an Excel spreadsheet. Or we can actually bring an AutoCAD drawing in. Now, there are different types of line types, and we're going to look at those. We have construction line types. We have um, center line types, and then we can show the formatting of the thicknesses of the lines, and that's really set up in your drawing. We can make a dimension, a reference dimension, or a driven dimension. It's driven by something else, and we can put points in. Now, points... You can make a point over here, or you can make a crosshair point, and it really doesn't matter what you do. In the model tab, we have extrusions, revolves, sweeps, lofts, coils, embosses. We can derive things, make ribs, decals, import, holes, fillets. So we don't have to draw a circle and extrude it. It actually has a hole and tons of kinds of holes in here. And then we can make work features like we can't sketch on a curved surface, but I can make a plane tangent to that surface so that I can sketch on it. Um, we can also pattern features. And we're going to try and pattern features instead of patterning sketches of features. You put one feature in and then you control it with the pattern of the feature instead of the pattern of the sketch. It's a lot simpler and you have a lot more options. This is like mud box. You can just freeform, just pull and push something if you really don't care about its size. Um, and then this is surfacing such as complex cur curvature. All right, we can do stress analysis on anything. If we apply a material, it knows how to act. We can hold it down by a certain face and put stress on a certain face and we can see the amount of displacement. And von, von, Mies, cur uh, don, von Mies curvature and stress analysis. And if I forgot to start a part in sheet metal, 
then I can convert it to a sheet metal part with this button right here. In the inspect tab across the top, we can measure things without putting a dimension on, a distance, an angle, the loop of a curve boundary, or the area of a surface. And then we can show a uh, surface analysis, such as how much draft it has for injection molding or, you know, the curvature where something reverses, that wouldn't be a good curvature, it reverses inward. So we can lay these on here and look at the curvature of our part. When we get into the view tab, we can turn things on and off. We can show our center of gravity. We can change our visual styles. And I'm going to show you how we're going to put this as a quick thing on our screen. We can show shadows and reflections. We can change it to perspective view, turn textures on and off from the material. And we slice graphics will use inside the sketch. So if I wanted to see a section view, I'd go to this half section view. And half section view or full section view, we can actually see and cut through our whole model, but that really doesn't affect our drawings. We'll be looking at some user interface things a little bit later and the, nav the full navigation um, tab on, on the right. The question was, is it possible to cast the program itself and go through the tabs and ribbons? We will do that. I just want to go through this really quickly. There, we will be applying um, the material and a different appearance because if we had 300 parts made of steel, they're all going to look the same and it's hard to discern which is which. So in the assembly, we can override that and say, make that, you know, the, the absolute materials appearances. We have application options and document settings. And the manage tab allows you to set up, this is where your rebuild all is, parameters, which are names for um, numbers or functions, dimensions. And we can put calculations in there by their names, like width divided by two. Styles editor is where we're going to be setting up our, our dimension styles. And we'll talk about the rest of these when we get into Inventor. So this shows you how to set up an environment. Um, document settings can set your units, but you want to be very careful. You don't, if you're starting in millimeters, if you have a millimeter part, start with a metric template. It's a lot easier than changing. It's, it's kind of not easy to change an inch part to a metric part. So you want to start with the template that's already set up with the units that way. And we've already gone through application options. And then we get to our part modeling exercises. Now, these first four parts are going to be put into a drawing. And so we're going to learn to make these features by modeling these parts and learning some advanced technology, uh, I guess, methodology for doing that as well. So this is our first part that we're going to make. And I just want to show you that it has you drawing lines for this part and dimensioning it. There, I'm going to model this differently. I love rectangles. It's way easier. So I don't have to draw this with lines and trim it out. But it, some, some shapes um, are a lot easier to model, you know, to draw with lines. So it's up to you how you want to draw. So this just shows you, I just wanted to show you that there are help sheets on these. They're a little bit outdated. So you might want to follow the, um, the videos. Like I would never have a sketch that has this all the way up top. I would connect it to the geometry. And it shows you how to do some of these things. And the whole feature is a little bit different. You don't have to create a sketch first. 
So I'm going to show you some of these things now when we go through our tool slide 1433. The next one is the axle base, and we'll be doing that on Tuesday when we come in. So we're just going to focus on the tool slide 1433 for right now.